1954, uh, uh, Dr. Joe Murray was the first one to do a human transplant and live and, and succeed. Now that was built on a decade's worth of work that started when Dr. Murray was in the Army uh, and he was the plastic surgeon in charge and he learned through that experience what kinds of skin grafts worked and what kinds of skin grafts didn't work. So over the years after he got out of uh, the Army, he came back to the Brigham where he had trained uh, and uh, began experimenting with different kinds of grafts, first with skin grafts and then trying to do organ grafts uh, and finally figured out that if he were to find a twins, identical twins, that he might be able to take an organ out of the healthy individual, the twin, and put it into the one that was sick or dying from his kidney disease. And that's what he did. One of the things we're most proud of is the legacy of the Nobel Prize for Dr. Murray in 1990. Uh, in 1990, it was recognized by the Nobel Committee that um, Dr. Murray's contributions were not only the courage to do the kind of transplant he did and figure out where it would go to work and be able to do it in an identical twin, but secondly, the development of immunosuppressive drugs that not only allowed non-identical twins to be uh, tr transplanted, but then also uh, donors who were deceased to be transplanted. That was, um, that was literally a world-changing series of events, and the Nobel Committee recognized that, and that's why he received the Nobel Prize. Since that time, in transplant, we have done some of the firsts in New England. We've done uh, multiple uh, organ transplants uh, on the same day from an individual donor. We've done multiple transplants on the same day from multiple donors. Uh, the, the most exciting recent thing that's been done uh, is something called composite tissue allografts uh, uh, transplantation, which is to take something as complex as a face and transplant it, or an arm and transplant it. That is, and will continue to be, pushing the frontiers of, of our innovation. So the difference between life-saving and life-enhancing as a either ethical or medical issue has only come to light in the last few years. It's very clear if, if your kidneys are failing, you're going to die or go on dialysis. If your lungs are heart are failing, you're going to die without a transplant. You can live with a disfigured face. You can live with parts of your face missing. Uh, but you don't integrate into society nearly as well. I think most of us underappreciated what or how important that would be in integrating somebody back into society after an injury. And the kind of work that Bo Palmahawk does is nothing short of magical. Conventional reconstruction really does not provide what the patients need, especially when it comes to face, uh, but also extremities and other truly irreplaceable human body parts. And that's why transplantation became really a new frontier in reconstruction, probably more suitably called restorative surgery. Because unlike what we have been doing for the past hundred years, piecing together the missing parts from patient's own body and really irrelevant and different tissues, uh, we are now able to restore what is missing with uh, tissues of identical origin, comprising of the same anatomic layers and functionally same elements. And I think for the coming future, restorative surgery is really what will help our patients get their quality of life back. Now in 2008, we had uh, approval to perform the face transplants, um, and it took a uh, little while to prepare the first patients, select them down, narrow them down, and we did our first transplant in 2009. We then really developed a concept of uh, the surgical technique that allowed not only feasibility and simplicity of the recovery of the tissues, 
but also allowed and allows customization of each uh, facial allograph that's recovered for each particular patient's needs uh, so that you can engage the proper nerves, the proper parts of the bone, uh, the proper muscles and uh, skin elements, all based on relatively simple uh, principle of uh, facial artery uh, blood supply. And uh, based on that, we have performed the first uh, full face transplant in the United States in 2011, and up to date, a total of six face transplants. We have learned tremendous amount of information. Uh, faces are unlike any other organ in more than one way. They have uh, incredible amount of interaction, interaction between the donor and recipient unlike kidney, liver, heart, or any other tissue, which has really inflow and outflow, but no surface interaction with the donor, between the donor and recipient. Uh, so what we are learning from the facial allo transplantation is something that uh, really opens new frontiers in our understanding of human immunology. It allows to look at interactions on a lot of broader scale uh, by ingrowth of vessels, uh, mingling of tissues, tissue chimerism, and also remarkably low level of rejection and uh, uh, right now loss of zero percent of our uh, allografts. Uh, so the, the success is really surprisingly uh, greater than any other transplanted organ to date. There has been simply no phase that we've failed immunologically. And we hope that what we are learning from that will cross-fertilize into other fields of transplantation will help us to understand certain mechanisms of tolerance and rejection, how the tissues are prevented from being rejected and how the rejection can be manipulated and treated. So the, I, I would say that the biggest challenge of uh, broad applicability of restorative uh, surgery or restorative transplantation is the need for immune suppression. We just recently got FDA approval and more recently IRB Institutional Review Board approval of uh, uh, immunoregulatory strategy that would allow us to manipulate the immune system rather, by, rather than just suppressing the immune system of the recipient. And if you imagine if we can achieve this minimization of immune suppression or immunoregulation perhaps even tolerance, where without any medications, the donor tissues are not rejected, then you could, you could see that the boundaries will broadly open and uh, uh, there will be really no limit of what would be suitable for transplantation. You could truly restore uh, individual uh, patients' uh, small body parts, from parts of face to individual digits, parts of hand, lower extremities, and so forth. Uh, so you could really apply the concept of restorative surgery a lot more broadly. The place I think we're going to be going in the future with transplantation is, is are, are these composite tissue uh, transplants. Uh, we've now done full face, uh, uh, partial face, uh, arm, uh, and uh, we're teeing up some uh, individuals to consider uh, multiple extremity uh, transplantations, including legs. Uh, there'll be challenges associated with that. That is the time it takes to recover, the time it takes the nerves to regenerate, the time it takes the muscles not to, to waste and then come back. Uh, but uh, our team is pushing forward as, as hard as they can on those issues.